Isaiah 40 and 28. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Thank God. Look, uh, every once in a while, we need to remind ourselves of our God. Thank God. He is the God that made it all. Thank God. And he went on to say, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fail. Thank God. When everything falls apart, there's God. He's God. I'm so thankful that I don't have to depend only on what I can do. There's a God that takes over because praise God, there comes a time when we need someone bigger than we are. And I'm glad that we have a God and his name is Jesus. And he is more than enough to help us through our struggles. Praise God. And then Isaiah, or Psalms chapter 27, verse number 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Thank God. I want to preach from this thought tonight, when nobody else can, nobody else can, God can. When nobody else can, God can. But then there's another footnote, but you may have to wait. Praise God. But it's all right. Let's ask him to help us tonight. Lord, I pray for you to move, move in a very special way. God, I thank you because when nobody else can, God can. God, teach us how to be patient. Teach us how to wait. We ask your blessings and help in Jesus' name. Jesus' name, we ask it for your help tonight. Praise God. God bless you. Shake hands with somebody. Tell them I'm glad you're in the house of the Lord with me tonight. You may be seated. Praise God. So this is the promise that we can take to the bank. Praise God. You know, there are promises in the Bible that we can take to the bank. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they'll run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Yes. So the promise is to wait and he shall renew thy strength. Thank God. He's going to help you so that you can run like you have never run before. Thank God. But even better than that, he's going to just, um, he's going to give you wings. But not just any old wings, but he's going to give you the wings of an eagle. So that you can soar above the storm. Because we all have storms. But it's never been his will for us to live in the storm. It's always been his will for us to live above the storm. Praise God. Waiting patiently is not a strong suit of us Americans. Praise God. Waiting is the hardest part of hope. You know, uh, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. Thank God. But when you say hope for, that means it's not here yet. And so sometimes it requires patience. Just don't get weary in waiting. Thank God. By nature, we are not patient people. Thank God. We are horn blowing. Thank God. Microwave cooking. FedEx mailing, fast food eating, thank God, the express lane shopping. I mean, we don't like to wait, wait at a red light. We don't like to wait uh, for the traffic. We don't like to wait on the phone. Thank God, we don't like to wait in line. So for most of us, waiting may be the hardest single thing that we are called on to do. Praise God. I have uh, managed in the last few years to overcome the tremendous temptation of impatience when the person in front of me is texting or whatever they're doing and their light is green and they don't want to go. Thank God. And I have been very uh, hard working at not blowing my horn. Praise God. Even sometimes it's so bad that Sister Smith even say, why don't you just blow your horn? And then she don't like to blow horn, but I mean, it can get impatient. But anyway, in spite of that, Thank God, there is a time that we just have to wait. So it is frustrating when we have to turn to the all-powerful, thank God, all-knowing, able to do anything, God. And he says, wait. Praise God. Because we know you can do it, God. We know you're able. We know you're abundantly uh, powerful to do all things. But uh, it looks sometimes like that he just wants us to wait. But, uh, you know, it is nothing new. Thank God. God's promises have always had to be waited on on many occasions. Abraham was promised at 75 that he would be the father of many nations, thank God. But he was 25 years later before Isaac came along. Israel was promised that he was going to deliver him out of slavery in Egypt. 
but it was 400 years before they came out of Egypt in bondage. David was anointed king at 15, but he was 40 before he was ever crowned. And Josh, Joseph, you know, was uh, given a dream that he would be a ruler. They got at a young age as a lad. And God, but he had to serve as a slave. He had to be put into prison. And God, in about 33 years of age, his promise came to position. Even Jesus paid the price for the new birth. And then he said, go tarry in Jerusalem and wait. Thank God. And wait for the promise. So as Jesus leaves them, thank God, standing there in eyes, he goes back up into heaven. Praise God. That's what uh, the message, the angel said, look, it's time to go back to Jerusalem and wait. So you, they all met. Uh, you know, in that upper room, and they were all continuing in prayer. Matter of fact, um, the Bible says that 500 people watched Jesus ascend back up into heaven. 500 people heard the command to go back to Jerusalem. I don't know, but what all 500 went back to Jerusalem, got into that place of prayer. Thanks God. But after one day, about 100 said, you know, I don't know about this. Thank God. And so it was down to 400. And after about two days, it was down to maybe 300. And ultimately, from seven to 10 days later, praying and fasting, praise God, 120 only left. But out of suddenly there came that sound from heaven when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. You know, sometimes we just don't understand that God works in moments. It's a moment, praise God. But suddenly there came that sound from heaven. And there appeared unto him cloven tongues like as a fire it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Thank God. Waiting requires faith. Thank God. It took faith to keep praying until the day of Pentecost. So I've come to remind you that what God has promised, he will do. Thank God. It, you know, if you will tarry, thank God, he will show up. Thank God. Sometimes, you know, it's slow in coming. Sometimes it will never be late, though. And that's the beauty of what God does. Even in Jesus' resurrection of Lazarus, they said, Lord, you're four days too late. But the truth was, he was right on time. And you may think he's late tonight. You may be going through a situation and you just think, Lord, when the answer coming? But I'm telling you, one day you'll look back and say, I understand, you're right on time. It just took all of that. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God. The problem is, is our time and God's time is not always the same time. Praise God. He doesn't work on our schedule. And we have to just understand that God wants to be me to just let him know that, God, you're in charge. Thank God, because you're the mighty God and you can do all things well. But God went, wants me to just tell you that, thank God, what, no matter how hard it may seem, thank God, that we need to understand, thank God, that he will, in his own time, at the right time, do whatever he needs to do. And I really believe that revival is coming. Praise God. I thank God because I believe that. You know, the devil's only hope is that uh, he can just get us to get discouraged, thank God, before the promise comes. Because the promise is going to come once God has said it. The devil has not an answer for a church that will get in unity and that will begin to pray, thank God, and that will begin to wait. Because I'm telling you, in due season, you're going to reap if you faint not. And so we're, we're doing some praying and we're doing some fasting, thank God. And now all it is is just a matter of continuing. Matter of fact, the Bible says to the early church, thank God, that they were a steadfast, thank God, in the apostles' doctrine and prayer. And God added to the church daily such as should be saved. And so we have a promise that if we'll do our part, such as should be saved, it's going to be added to the church. Thank God. And so we're getting our weapons out of prayer. We're getting our weapons out of fasting. Thank God. And we're going to take the fight to the enemy's camp. Thank God the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church. We're going to keep doing the right thing. Thank God. And when the time is right and when the dust settles, thank God, there is going to be revival. God is going to answer prayer. God is not a man that he can lie. Praise God. And when he says it will be, thank God, when God speaks, it is done. Though I may not uh, come the way that I'm expecting it to come, it may not come through the source that I think it should come through, but I just want you to know that it can come God's way. There are times you just have to trust God and know that what he has promised, 
He's going to deliver it in his time. Thank God. And so don't be surprised when the wind blows and some may even be shaken. Thank God. Just remember, God is never taken by surprise. There's nobody going through a situation and you're having to get God and bring him up to date on your situation. Thank God. He knows where you're at. Thank God. Storms don't uh, stop him. Thank God. He can still walk on the waters. He can still calm any storm. And so you just have to know that at his time, he will make a way. Thank God. I know even when we all um, fail God, sometimes we feel like that now we're disqualified. The enemy tries to bring up all your failures and tell you why God's not going to answer your prayer. Thank God. But, you know, God is not surprised. He wasn't surprised when Peter denied him and failed him. Thank God. Matter of fact, he already tried to prepare Peter for what was coming. But after the, that failure, Peter lost all hope that he could be used of God. Matter of fact, he felt that he would disqualify himself. And so that is why when Jesus arose from the dead, he said, go tell my disciples and Peter, I want them to meet me. Thank God you're still on the team. You haven't been disqualified. Some of us have slipped and fell and we think that, well, God won't be able to use me, but I'm telling you, whatever God planned for you, he still got that plan. Thank God. He didn't cancel the plan. He didn't cancel the desire. He didn't cancel the ministry, the calling, whatever it is that God has put on your life. Thank God. And so let's just get one thing clear. Thank God. He didn't promise us that it would always be blue skies and gentle breezes blowing. But he did promise us, thank God, that he would forgive our sins. He did promise us that he would heal our bodies. He did promise that he would never leave us or never forsake us. Thank God. He did promise with every temptation that would be made a way of escape, thank God. And he did say that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. And so I've come to tell him, thank God, there may be a Peter here tonight. I've come to tell you that God still is going to use you. God still has a plan for your life, thank God. And, and I want to tell the church, thank God. I want to tell the church that I hear the sound of abundance of rain, and I'm not talking about the weather. Praise God. I know there's... But I'm not talking about the weather. I'm talking about that sound from heaven. Praise God. Oh, help us, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings as eagles. Thank God. He's got strength for the weak. He's got power for the faint. He's got wings for us to mount up with so that we can soar. Thank God. Waiting on God means that sometimes we have to work through some conflicts. We have to forgive some offenses. We have to resolve some disputes. Thank God. And we have to stay in his presence until his power comes. I'm thinking sometimes we just get in a little too big a hurry. And we never really get that touch that we need because we just didn't stay quite long enough. If we just waited a little longer so often, thank God, in doing the work of God, we become spiritually dehydrated. And a dehydrated heart, thank God, seems to get despair. Thank God, it begins to waver. It begins to worry. It begins to feel hopeless. It begins to feel fear. It even feels resentment and all those things. But you don't have to live with in dehydration. Praise God. Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him just come to me, thank God, and I'll give him a well of living water. Thank God. So we're invited just to come and to wait until the power comes. Come and wait until the well begins to spring up. Every once in a while, you just got to get to talking to your well and say, come on, spring up, oh well. Spring up, oh well. Thank God. When the power comes, thank God, it produces a spirit of unity. It produces a spirit of togetherness. It gives us power to live in victory. Thank God. And so as a child of God, we need to just walk in the spirit. If we can just walk in the spirit, thank God, in your walk with God, thank God, you will surely be tried. Some of you are going through a trial right now. Some of you have been in the fire and sometimes you just wonder, is it ever going to pass? But I'm telling you, thank God, his promise is that weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. We all experience some struggles in life. Some of you are making, you know, understand that this is where that he has put me for the moment, but it's not where that I'm destined to stay. Thank God. Sometimes it's because of unexpected circumstances in our lives. Thank God. We are all have to be uh, aware of the problems that come sometimes through the disappointments. Thank God. We've all been burned by situations in life that leaves uh, its scars. But in spite of all the scars, thank God, rejoice not against me, oh, my enemy, because I'm going to rise up. I'm going to keep running. Thank God. It's clear. 
We need strength that comes from God. And there are times that you just have to let God work. Habakkuk said it like this, the Lord God is my strength and he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon high places to the chief singers of the, all the string instruments. Thank God. Now the point of this verse really is that God wants us to have an enduring, sure-footed faith in him. Thank God that we can stand in the high places. God's in control and he will always be right on time. Thank God I've never known how precious it is to be able to have that time with God until I need supernatural strength. You know, there, you, you really haven't experienced God until you don't have it, but you know he has it. Thank God. And supernatural strength just come to you. I've never realized how helpless I was until I had things that hit me that I had no control over. Thank God. Many of us, you know, we have situations in life we have no control over. Them. Thank God. All we can do is just reach out and take hold of his hand. And I can truly say that I have found in prayer what I could not find anywhere else. I found peace in prayer. I found strength in prayer. I found help in time of trouble in prayer. Thank God you can get a little bit of heaven on earth. Praise God. You know, you can get in your prayer closet and suddenly you're just in a heavenly place. You don't have, you know, the cares and the fears and the problems and the troubles. They're out there when you can get shut in with him in that closet of prayer. So I've come tonight to encourage you to just hold on to your vision. Thank God, don't let your dream die. Thank God, the promises are sure. Thank God, he will help. What God has promised you in your vision, your dream will come. Thank God, in his chosen time, don't try to figure it out. Don't try to make it happen. Just trust and know that God, at his time, thank God, will do and not be late. Praise God. Isaiah said it again like this. He give us power to the faint and to them that have neither uh, he give a strength to them and but they that wait upon the Lord they're going to renew their strength they're going to mount up with wings as eagles they're going to run and not be weary walk and not faint praise God you can can make it praise God all you have to do thank God is just hang in there so many times it's just a matter of keeping on keeping on because God will work who will let him while we're standing tonight the Bible says Thank God again, and it's, uh, there goes one of our flood alerts um, off, but that's all right. Praise God. Acts chapter 1 and verse number 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father that he saith unto them, you have heard of me, this promise. Thank God. For John truly baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Thank God. So if there's someone here tonight that doesn't have the Holy Ghost, I want you to know, thank God, you can be baptized with the Holy Ghost tonight. Thank God. It's a promise and it's a gift. Thank God. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to do anything but repent. Thank God. That's all God asks us to do is just repent. That means you just turn away from the old life, turn to the new life. Thank God. And it is for you. Thank God. It's for whosoever will. Thank God. If you want to be changed, you can be changed tonight. Thank God. Jesus said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. It's power to live free from sin. Thank God. It's power to break addiction. Thank God. It's power to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And it's yours for the asking. Praise God. It's for whosoever will. Praise God. Miracles can happen in this place tonight. Hey, God, I'm telling you, somebody could have a miracle tonight. There's no greater miracle, praise God. There's no greater miracle than receiving eternal salvation. Thank God. I know that we would love to see Brother David healed tonight. I know that we would love to see my wife healed and others that maybe are carrying afflictions in their body tonight. But all of those things, it doesn't matter. That body's still going to pass away someday. But tonight, if you can be born again, thank God, you can receive an eternal salvation. A miracle, thank God, that will never, thank God, die. A miracle that will live through eternity. So while we sing a chorus, I wonder if there's some that need a miracle tonight. You need God to do something. Maybe you need the Holy Ghost. Maybe you need a fresh touch. Whatever it is tonight, God wants to help you. Praise God. If you want to make your way to the altars tonight, he is more than enough tonight.